Hello. Today, Grandma wants to tell you another flannel board story. This is a true story out of the Bible, and it's called Joseph Forgives His Brothers. So it starts a long time ago in the land of Canaan. There was a good man named Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons whom he loved very much. His two youngest sons were called Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph and Benjamin were born when Jacob was a very old man, and it seemed that he loved these two boys even more after their mother died. Well, when Joseph was young, he had two dreams. He dreamed that his brothers and his father bowed down to him. Joseph told his brothers about these dreams. His brothers were not happy with the dreams. They thought, who is our little brother to say that we would bow down to him? And so they were angry. And then not long after, the Bible calls it a coat of many colors that their father gave to Joseph. It was the kind of coat that a prince or a oldest son of a very wealthy family would wear. But Joseph wasn't a prince and he wasn't from a wealthy family. So the brothers were jealous that he was getting special treatment from their father. Well, when Joseph was about 17 years old, Jacob sent the 10 oldest boys to a place called Shechem to take care of their flocks. After they had been gone for a while, Jacob was wondering how they were doing. So Joseph, who was the oldest boy left at home, was sent to go check on his brothers to see how they were doing. Shechem was quite a journey away. And as Joseph was approaching their camp, the brothers saw him coming. <clears throat> they were still angry because it seemed that their father favored Joseph over them. They decided that they wanted to get rid of Joseph. But Reuben, the oldest brother, suggested that instead of harming the boy, they should put him in a pit because he thought that later he could take him out of the pit and return him safely to their father. So that's what they did. When Joseph got close, they grabbed him and put him in the pit. Later, while Reuben was on an errand, the other brothers were talking about what they should do to Joseph, and they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming. They decided that they would sell Joseph to the Ishmaelites as a slave. They lifted him out of the pit and sold him for 20 pieces of silver. Then Joseph's brothers returned home to their father and told him that Joseph must have been killed by a wild beast because they had his coat, which they had dipped in goat's blood. And they said, see, here is his coat. So he must have been killed by a wild beast. Poor Jacob was very sad to think that his son had been killed. So Joseph was taken by the Ishmaelites, by the slave traders to Egypt, where he was sold to a very rich man named Potiphar. Now, Heavenly Father loved Joseph and he protected and blessed him because he was a hard worker and most especially, he kept the commandments. Joseph was also blessed with the ability to interpret dreams. Now there's much more interesting things that of Joseph's adventures in Egypt that you might want to read about later. But for now, we'll just say that one day, Joseph interpreted 
one of Pharaoh's dreams. Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. And Joseph told him the dream meant that God would bring a famine to the land after seven years of plenty. So Pharaoh put, jo Pharaoh believed him and Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all the land of Egypt to prepare for the famine. Only Pharaoh was more important and powerful than Joseph. So for seven years, Joseph supervised the storage of food so that during their times of plenty, so that there would be food to eat during the famine. Once the famine started, the people back in the land of Canaan were getting hungry because they didn't have any food. They heard that in Egypt there was food. So Jacob sent his 10 oldest sons to Egypt to buy food, but he kept Benjamin at home. When the brothers appeared before Joseph, they didn't recognize him. And they bowed down before him. It had been many years since they had seen him. And of course, they did not expect their younger brother to be a powerful ruler in Egypt. Joseph recognized them, but he did not tell them who he was. Joseph pretended to believe that they were spies. They explained that they were brothers, that there had been 12 of them, but one was dead and the youngest was with their father. Joseph insisted that they bring the youngest brother to him to prove that they were telling the truth. He took Simeon and bound him and kept him prisoner while the others returned to their own land and to Jacob. After a while, they didn't really want to, but they came back to Egypt and they brought Benjamin as Joseph had required. Again, for the second time, they bowed down before Joseph. Joseph said that they should leave Benjamin with him as his servant. They were very troubled by this. Judah had promised his father that he would take care of Benjamin and bring him safely back home. He told Joseph that he must keep his word to his father and return Benjamin safely. Otherwise, his father would die of grief. Then he and the other brothers told Joseph that Jacob, their father, had already lost one son whom he loved dearly, and he could not stand to lose Benjamin also. Judah asked Joseph to let him take Benjamin's place. He promised he would serve Joseph faithfully all the days of his life. Joseph went where he could be alone and wept. He was glad that Judah had changed since the day when he and some of the other brothers had sold Joseph to the slave traders. He knew now they were very sorry for what they had done. When he returned to the room, he ordered everyone except the brothers to leave. Then he told them who he was. The brothers were so surprised, they hardly knew what to say. They feared Joseph because of their sin against him, what they had done, and the fact that he was now a powerful ruler in Egypt. Joseph told them not to be sorry or angry with themselves any longer, that he was in Egypt because God wanted him to be there so that he would be able to save their lives because he was prepared to feed them. Joseph hugged Benjamin and kissed him. Then he hugged and kissed and wept over all of his brothers. So his brothers knew that Joseph loved them and had forgiven them. Joseph told his brothers to hurry back to Canaan and tell their father that he was alive and well and to tell him to come to Egypt because God had sent him to Egypt to preserve their lives. So something good had come out of what had happened to Joseph's great trial. And
and good things happen too when we forgive one another.